Chinese leader Xi Jinping drops threats aimed at the U.S. in an anniversary speech on the Korean War. This, as a state broadcaster documentary accuses the U.S. of crimes against humanity. The new iPhone launch hits stores in China, fans cheering for a 5G model of their favorite brand. More and more big companies are leaving China. The latest one is France's second largest retail group, Auchan. This after French retailer Carrefour and Tesco from the UK. Protesters gathered in Beijing, a rare scene for the capital of a totalitarian country. A tutoring school owes a huge sum of money to teachers and parents. And two more countries say no to China, Brazil to a vaccine made in China and Slovakia to Chinese companies' involvement in 5G networks. Welcome to China In Focus, I'm Tiffany Meyer. A third major international supermarket chain is set to leave the Chinese market. And France's second largest retail group says it will be selling its Chinese brands to China's e-commerce giant Alibaba. French retail group Auchan announced it will sell its Chinese subsidiary SunArt to China's e-commerce giant Alibaba for $3.5 billion and withdraw from China. The deal concerns a chain of 484 hypermarkets and 150,000 employees. Auchan is one of the world's largest retailers and the third major international supermarket chain that is set to leave the Chinese market. It follows the footsteps of French retailer Carrefour and Tesco from the UK. Auchan's gradual withdrawal was already apparent last year when the group transferred the operational management of SunArt to its Taiwanese partner. A year earlier, Alibaba had already taken more than one-third of SunArt's share and became its second largest stakeholder. In a Tuesday press release, Auchan cited the unique nature of the Chinese market to explain its complete withdrawal from China without detailing the reason. With this acquisition, the online retailer giant Alibaba will instantly become a large physical retailer in the country. Reporting by Xu Wenhui, NTD News. As supply chains move out of China, high-skilled Chinese technicians are seeking jobs in Vietnam and other Southeast Asian regions. And Beijing is building fences on the China-Vietnam border to prevent Chinese people from fleeing the country. Almost a thousand Chinese technicians gathered near the China-Vietnamese border in Guangxi on Tuesday. The technicians have reportedly been hired by multiple Chinese or Taiwanese enterprises in Vietnam and will work in high-skilled jobs. A detailed list includes over 700 technical supervisors from four enterprises. In an interview with the broadcaster Radio Free Asia, Chinese businessman Mr. Chen said as a large number of foreign companies leave China, many Chinese companies have recently moved their factories to Vietnam. As many industries leave China and move to Southeast Asia, Chinese finance scholar Si Ling is worried that it will be hard for the region to absorb the massive influx of labor from China. He told RFA their demand for labor won't grow as fast as China expects. The Chinese Communist Party is building a hundreds of kilometers long border fence on the China-Vietnam border, which is more than two meters high. It's claimed the wall prevents Chinese people from fleeing China. The pandemic is putting some companies in China in financial trouble. A tutoring school in Beijing is in debt to teachers and parents, totaling nearly $1.5 million and is refusing to pay. Thousands of protesters gathered around the school's headquarters to demand compensation. Earlier this week, crowds of parents and teachers gathered at the headquarters of a tutoring company, Yuwin Education shouting pay up and demanding compensation and refunds. UN Education is a company providing a wide range of tutoring services and has over 1,200 school branches across China. Over 200 police were on the scene and some of those protesting were arrested. The company was experiencing financial issues since last year and the pandemic made their situation worse. One of the company's schools in Beijing's Chaoyang district owes its teachers over $150,000 in salaries. In Beijing's Guangxi Main campus alone, parents are owed over $1 million in refunds. A UN education teacher says teachers haven't been paid in about six months. A school in Beijing's Jingsong area recently closed down and is refusing to pay teachers. Chen Ping, a teacher from Beijing's Jingsong campus, 
says that just last week during class time, the head of the school district suddenly announced that they were closing down and that the teachers' outstanding salaries were all void. To deceive us to continue teaching classes, he told us that the wages we are owed prior to July for the first half of the year will be paid in full in October and November. Since then, we have been teaching. We are in a pandemic. Everyone felt that this situation will pass. We didn't expect to be fooled like this. We taught classes until the very day we were told to close down. According to a research report released by the Chinese Association for Non-Government Education in June, about 30 percent of institutions in China were likely to close down. Now we turn to Hong Kong. Hong Kong's flagship carrier, Cathay Pacific Airways, announced on Wednesday it will seize its regional Cathay Dragon brand. This after publishing plans to cut almost 6,000 jobs. It's cutting costs as it tries to deal with a plunge in demand due to the pandemic. The airline will also change contract conditions with cabin crew and pilots. Analysts were already expecting major job losses. The airline received a $5 billion rescue package from the Hong Kong government in June. Cathay Pacific is the world's 10th largest airline. Now we turn to Beijing. Chinese leader Xi Jinping appears to be sending veiled threats at Washington this Friday. That's as the regime marks the 70th anniversary of the Korean War. Xi's speech comes amid rising tensions between China and the U.S., with both presidential candidates promising to take a hard line against Beijing. Although Xi didn't mention the United States by name, analysts say he's referring to it in a roundabout way. Speaking about the war 70 years ago, Xi said the Chinese military beat their American counterparts, shattering the myth of the invincibility of the U.S. military. Xi's speech is aligning with the official party narrative that China beat the U.S. in the Korean War in an effort to protect China's sovereignty. But the war wasn't about China. It started with North Korea invading the South in 1950. At the time, China helped North Korea, while the United Nations troops helped the South. China was technically fighting against the United Nations troops, which is largely made up of Americans. The war ended with a truce, which means neither side won. But in China, the war is applauded as a victory over the U.S. Xi also warned, let the world know that the Chinese people are now organized and aren't to be trifled with. Once provoked, things will get ugly. Now we turn to China's state television broadcaster. In a documentary, the state broadcaster accused the U.S. of using biological weapons in the Korean War. In early 1952, the United States violated international laws and humanitarianism, secretly waging bacteriological warfare in the north of North Korea and parts of China. The broadcaster, China Central Television, is one of the main propaganda arms of the communist regime. The documentary was filmed by the country's top military body, the Central Military Commission. The charge is not new. Back in the 1950s, the Soviet Union, China and North Korea accused the U.S. of waging biological warfare in the Korean War. The United States denied the claims. Later, the International Committee of the Red Cross requested independent investigations in China and North Korea. But authorities in both countries refused the offer. While the Chinese Communist Party was sending veiled threats to Washington, the new iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 Pro from the U.S. giant Apple hit stores in China on Friday, with fans cheering for a 5G model of their favorite brand. iPhone 12 arrived in China on Wednesday. On the same day, the head of the Chinese Communist Party, Xi Jinping, threatened the U.S. with a heavy fight back. Fewer people than usual were lining up outside of the Apple stores due to the pandemic, but the excitement was still there. I feel great, especially being the first customer to get the new phone. I have been waiting for a long time. Usually the new phones are available in September, but due to the pandemic, it got delayed till now. I feel that it's arrived a little bit late. I was expecting it last year. I thought Apple would have released it last year. In China, Apple has lagged behind local competitors, such as Huawei and Xiaomi, for years. 
According to analysts, Apple's market share in China is under 10 percent. Yet some fans were still waiting for 5G from Apple. Though domestic 5G has already hit the market some time ago, we were still expecting to see 5G from the biggest mobile phone manufacturer, Apple. We also look forward to see how Apple will promote the whole 5G industry as Apple leads the way. Another two iPhone 12 models, iPhone 12 mini and iPhone Pro Max, will unveil on November 13th in China. The iPhone 12 series costs over $800 for a mini version, rising to around $1,800 for the top of the range. NTD News. U.S. officials in Taiwan reportedly encourage local tech companies to speed up cutting ties with China. This as the Trump administration continues its effort to suppress Beijing's model of authoritarianism through technology. Officials from the de facto U.S. Embassy in Taiwan have visited multiple major Taiwanese technology companies this summer, encouraging them to move production out of China and reduce ties with clients like Huawei. That's according to a recent report by the Japanese media Nikkei Asia Review. It comes as the Trump administration continues its efforts to suppress Beijing's model of authoritarianism through technology. According to the outlet, a person close to Taiwan's de facto U.S. embassy said that it is routine practice for the organization to keep in contact with Taiwanese businesses about, quote, supply chain restructuring and export control compliance. Taiwanese investment in the mainland has dropped for four years in a row. According to official data, Taiwanese money entering China in 2019 dropped by 51 percent compared to the previous year. The president of Taiwan's Institute of Economic Research, Zhang Jianyi, told media that the so-called de-Chinatization has taken shape in Taiwan, and the trend might expand to the world because of the pandemic. Companies returning to Taiwan have helped to boost the local economy. As a result, local media reports that the island has seen an increase of $64 billion in investment and 90,000 jobs. China was a hot topic at the final presidential debate Thursday night. The moderator, NBC's Kristen Welker, brought up the issue of China. Let's talk about China more broadly. There have, of course, President Trump has said that they should pay for not being fully transparent in regards to the coronavirus. If you were president, would you make China pay? And please be specific, what would that look like? What I'd make China do is play by the international rules. Despite saying he would get China to play by international rules, Biden offered little in terms of specifics. The candidate's answers quickly spiraled into accusations of corruption. Biden pointed to Trump's Chinese bank account, and Trump brought up Hunter Biden's reported ties to Ukraine and China. Trump said Biden was the one who was making money from China, not him. I don't make money from China. You do. I don't make money from Ukraine. You do. I don't make money from Russia. You made three and a half million dollars, Joe, and your son gave you. Trump added that his bank account was for doing business in China and that he closed it before running for president. China has come up amid questions of foreign interference and election integrity. That Russia has been involved, China has been involved to some degree, and now we learn that, that, uh, that uh, Iran is involved. They will pay a price if I'm elected. They're interfering with American sovereignty. Biden also mentioned China when responding about nuclear threats and North Korea. He said he would continue ramping up a military presence to deal with the threat of North Korea. And when it came to questions of climate change and carbon emissions, Trump defended pulling out of the Paris Agreement. I took us out because we were going to have to spend trillions of dollars and we were treated very unfairly. When they put us in there, they did us a great disservice. They were going to take away our businesses. He added that under his administration, the carbon emission levels have been their best in 35 years, while trashing the air quality in other countries, such as China. And one of the biggest issues involving China was the pandemic. It's China's fault. And you know what? It's not Joe's fault that it came here either. It's China's fault. They kept it from going into the rest of China for the most part, but they didn't keep it from coming out to the world, including Europe and ourselves. Biden blamed Trump for the virus. Regardless which candidate wins the election, China is bound to continue being a major issue for the U.S. Hunter Biden's former associate says he dealt directly with Joe Biden and that Biden's claims of not discussing business with his son are false. 
Hunter Biden's former business partner says he discussed the family's China deal with Joe Biden in early May 2017. At my approximately hour-long meeting with Joe that night, we discussed the Biden's history, the Biden's family business plans with the Chinese, with which he was plainly familiar, at least at a high level. He said he got an email several days later. It listed how they wanted to spread out the assets, with 10 percent held by H for the big guy. Bobulinski says there is no question H stands for Hunter and big guy stands for Joe Biden. In fact, Hunter often referred to his father as the big guy or my chairman. On numerous occasions, it was made clear to me that Joe Biden's involvement was not to be mentioned in writing, but only face to face. In fact, I was advised by Gillier and Walker that Hunter and Jim Biden were paranoid about keeping Joe Biden's involvement secret. Bobulinski says he had a disagreement with Hunter about the funds. He said Hunter wanted $5 million to go directly to himself and his family, saying the Chinese company was really investing in the Biden family. Bobulinski says he's turning over three smartphones with evidence about the deal to the FBI. He's also meeting with Senate investigators. Like many other countries, India is locked in a military standoff with China. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo will visit the country next week to strengthen strategic ties. It's Washington's latest effort to bolster allies against the Chinese Communist Party. Pompeo will also travel to Sri Lanka and the Maldives as part of an intensifying pushback against China's economic and military power in the region. Pompeo's trip will conclude in the final week before the U.S. presidential election. The last country he will visit is Indonesia, which is also locked in territorial disputes with China in the South China Sea. The U.S. is working to identify Chinese products made with forced labor. Customs and Border Protection just added a new product to their list of banned goods. It has conclusive evidence that a Chinese company uses forced labor to make stevia, a natural sugar substitute. The CBP ordered American ports to seize all shipments. The CBP determined that the Chinese company in Inner Mongolia used convict forced or indentured labor to produce stevia extracts. Brazil's president, Jair Bolsonaro, says that the federal government will not buy a CCP virus vaccine from the Chinese company Sinovac. The president's announcement comes one day after Brazil's health minister said the vaccine would be included in the nation's immunization program. The about face was attributed to a mistake by an interpreter. A health official later said that the government had no interest in Chinese vaccines. Brazil is already acquiring the British-Swedish AstraZeneca vaccine to produce at its own biomedical center. But Bolsonaro said on Wednesday that all vaccines are rejected until regulatory approval is given. The so-called vaccine diplomacy is part of Beijing's efforts to promote itself as a global leader in combating the pandemic. Its previous effort was mask diplomacy, conducted by Beijing earlier this year. They sold or gave out much-needed supplies, such as masks and respirators, to countries across the world. While recipient countries initially welcomed the assistance, backlash was forming after many countries reported faulty equipment from China. Slovakia and the U.S. have signed a joint memorandum covering the security of 5G networks on Wednesday. According to a statement from the U.S. State Department, by signing a joint statement, Slovakia will follow recommendations of the European Union and NATO on the rules for building secure 5G networks. The statement also strengthens the cooperations of the two countries in areas of information security and communication systems. The U.S. has signed similar agreements with other Eastern European countries, such as the Czech Republic, Poland, Romania, Slovenia, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. It is aimed at countering Chinese telecoms equipment companies like Huawei that the U.S. claims imposes information security risks on other countries. And that's all for today's China In Focus. Thanks for watching and see you next time.